for the first part of this question in part A, we are presented with an exponential equation of the same powers of k, but they are of different bases. So on the left, we have a base of 9 and 4. On the right, we have a base of 6. So to solve for the value of k, we will need one of the laws to change all the bases to be the same, or at least link up the bases. So over here, for the first law that we'll be talking about, the distribution law, whereby a single base of a, b to the power of n can be written as a product of two separate bases of a and b and the respective powers of n for each separate base. So a, b to the power of n is the same as a to the power of n times b to the power of n. And with this, we can start to change the bases. So 9 is the same as 3 squared. 4 to the power of k is the same as 2 to the power of 2k. And shifting this from the right to the left becomes a negative. 6 to the power of k using this law can now be written as a 3 to the power of k times 2 to the power of k. So we have changed or we have linked up all the bases. So over here, we have 3, base of 3, base of 2, and base of 3s and 2s. Now, as you can see here, it still looks pretty complicated. So let's simplify this further by doing some form of substitution. So changing 3 to the power of k to be a p, 3 to the power of 2k is now a p squared in blue. Changing 2 to the power of k to be a q, 2 to the power of 2k is now a q squared. And changing this in purple will therefore be a negative 5pq and I write it in the middle. Now as you can see here, this is a 3p squared minus 5pq plus 2q squared is equal to 0. So once we change it to p's and q's, we can tell that we are able to do a cross fact to give us these terms. So over here, the first pair of parentheses we will have is a 3p minus 2q multiplied by p minus q like this. So for the first solution set, whereby we set 3p to be equal to 2q, we now have it like this. And changing the p back to be a 3k, the q back to be a 2k like this. So we now have 3 times 3 to the power of k equals to 2 times 2 to the power of k. So shifting the 2, the constant of 2 from the right to the left will now be a 3 over 2. And shifting the 3 to the power of k from the left to the right will now be 2 to the power of k divided by 3 to the power of k. Now as we can see here, this one, you have the same powers of k. We're going to use another similar distribution law over here. Instead of a product earlier, we now have it as a divide. So over here, we have a single base of power of n. We can now write it as a fraction over here, a to the power of n divided by b to the power of n. So I'm going to apply this law from the right to the left in state. So over here on the right, we can change it into a 2 over 3 whole thing to the power of k. Now, as you can see here, the base on the left is different from the base on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the base on the left to the same base as the one on the right which is a two-thirds. And to do so, as you can see here, it's just a reciprocal of each other. So over here, we'll be using a negative index. So whereby a to the power of negative n is the same as 1 over a to the power of n. So negative index basically means to say that we will change the negative powers to a positive powers by taking a reciprocal. So over here, taking a reciprocal so that it becomes a two-thirds, my power now is negative 1. Now as you can see here, the base of 2 thirds on the left is the same as the base of 2 thirds on the right. So now the power will be the same. So the first solution set or the first answer will therefore give us k to be a negative 1. Moving over to the next solution set, whereby we set p minus q to be equal to 0, p to be equal to q. And changing back the p's and q's, we now have 3 to the power of k to be equal to 2 to the power of k. So over here, the 2 to the power of k, I'm going to shift it to the right. Over here, we have it 3 to the power of k divided by 2 to the power of k on the left. And on the right, we now have it as a 1. So what do we do next? As we can see here, a 1, we can therefore use the zero index law. So over here, anything to the power of 0 is the same as 1. So basically, I can change this 1 into 3 over 2 to the power of 0. So on the left, I'm using the same distribution law highlighted in blue, whereby we have a 3 over 2 to the power of k. And on the right, since the base is a 3 over 2, I can rewrite it as a 3 over 2. But right now, I raise it now to the power of 0. So same base of 3 over 2 on the left, same base of 3 over 2 on the right. So now our power will be the same. So k will now be equal to 0 for the second solution set. And that's the answer for part A of this question. For part B of this question, we're given a fraction that has a very complicated search inside 
and we have to simplify it in the form of n root a plus n b. And so we will first start off by identifying which is more complicated. And over here, we can do something with this part in yellow of a minus b squared to the power of 3 that is embedded within this big square root. And to do so, we will need one of the first law of thirds, whereby root of a, b can be written as a root a times root b. So we are going to split this out, a minus b squared to the power of 3 into a minus b squared to the power of 2, as well as a minus b squared to the power of 1. Now, as you can see here, a very big set I now split into two separate sets. Now, why do I want to group this set together? Because a minus b squared times a plus b squared is using one of the special algebraic identity later on. And for here, we can also further simplify with the next law, whereby root of a squared is the same as a. So root of this thing square is the same as a minus b square. So we've taken out one of the sets like this. And for this part over here, so we have a minus b square times a plus b square within this big square root. And so we're expanding it with this algebraic identity over here, x plus y times x minus y to be equal to x square minus y square. We now have it as a, a square minus with b to the power of 4 in blue like this. So what happens for this special algebraic identity is that we'll be using this very frequently, whether to use it as a conjugate root or um, to rationalize the denominator later on. So over here in the next step, as we can see here, this thing in fraction of root of a squared minus b to the power of 4 can be cancelled off to the top and bottom like this. So leaving us with this term, this fraction. Now as you can see over here, we have a root a plus b at the bottom and we are supposed to simplify it such that there should not be any more thirds at the denominator. So we need to find a way to get rid of this and to do so, we need to rationalize the denominator. So to rationalize the denominator of 1 over p plus q root a, so over here, p plus q root a. So the conjugate search for this would therefore be p minus q root a. As you can see, we are using this special algebraic identity over here. So p plus q root a times a p minus q root a will now be a p square minus away q square a. So we, have, we will get rid of the search like this. So multiplying a p minus q root a to the top and bottom, this is now our rationalizing factor. And so to rationalize this denominator of root a plus b, we will multiply it by root a minus b to the top and bottom, highlighted in green. Now as you can see here, root a plus b times root a minus b in pink, I'm going to use a special algebraic identity to give us an a minus away b squared. So root a times root a is an a, minus away b times b is therefore a negative b squared like this. And what happens is that, as you can see here, a minus b squared to the top and bottom can therefore be cancelled out and leaving us with only root a minus b. And that's the answer for part b of this question. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something again and see you in the next episode of Practical Math.